back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to be making some more dragons. Today I'm going to be making some water dragons and they're going to be inspired off of a couple different weird creatures that you really wouldn't think to combine them with. Today we're going to be making angler dragons. So obviously we're going to have angler fish and then I wanted to have the body shaped like an otter's body. I thought that would be very cute. And then I wanted a squished face so there's kind of a bit of a pug slash bulldog look to them. <laughs> Anyways, let's get started. So like I said, this creature is a very weird combination of a bunch of different creatures that you would never really expect to combine together to make something cute or even creepy, and I'm trying for both. And honestly, I have no idea how I came up with this idea. Anyways, I'm gonna be starting on the clay and getting the head started. So I'm gonna get a lump of tin foil completely covered in a nice thick layer of clay, smooth it out, and try and get a rough idea of what I want the head to look like. Remember, I said I wanted to kind of have more of a bulldog face, so it's gonna be really flat. And then I want the eyes to be very large to emulate the angler fish in the creature. So I'm going to use some resin pieces that are quite decently large. I'm going to place them on the front of the face and then I'm going to start figuring out where all the different facial features are going to go around this. I wanted the face to be a little fuller so I wanted the cheeks to be kind of rounded and cute and just a little chubby here and there. So when I'm adding the clay to the face around the eyes, I'm adding some balls of clay and just kind of laying everything out and blending them together. And then once I have the little chubby cheeks in place and our eyelids framing the eyes, I'm going to start working on the snout. Now remember, this is going to be really short, so I'm not going to add a ton of extra clay to this, but I am going to add a little bit and figure out where the nose is going to go. And then I want to add a bunch of wrinkles to this, kind of going over the top of the nose and going down the side of the face. So I'm going to make a few strips of clay that are nice and thin and I'm going to lay them across the snout just right above the nose. I'm going to lay a few of them there to make it look like there's a ton of wrinkles and then I'm going to drape some of them going down the sides of the face. Next, I want to work on the shape of the nose and figuring out where the nostrils are going to be. So I'm going to use my dotting tool for this and just kind of push into the clay and move things around until I get the shape that I want for the nose. After that, I'm going to need to figure out where I want the teeth. This is going to be another angler fish style to the face. I want to have a bunch of teeth sticking out from the bottom jaw going up. So I'm going to lay out some clay right there and just kind of figure out where I want all the teeth. And then I'm going to take a strip of clay and use that to make the bottom lip and blend that into the face. I'm going to add a few extra wrinkles to the face, just make sure that I like the look of everything. I'm going to add a bit of a texture and then I need to figure out where I'm going to have some antennae and some ears going later. So I need to make some holes, that way I can connect the wires for these later. So I'm just going to mark that out with a bigger dotting tool and then kind of push in with another tool to make it sink in just a little bit. I'm not making the holes exactly right now because I am going to be making molds of this head and the holes are just going to make it a little hard to cast everything. So once we're done with that, I'll end up using a drill and cleaning out the holes later. Anyways, after cleaning things up a little bit, I finished my head. I'm going to put this in the oven for about 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit and I'm going to move on to making our feet. Now for the feet, I wanted to try something a little bit different. I wanted the toes to be nice and chubby, but I also wanted a little bit of a webbing in between them because this is a water dragon. So I kind of sketched something out to figure out how I wanted everything to look, and then I started working on the feet. So while making the feet, I need something to hold on to so I don't stick my fingers in the clay. So the wire frame for this is mainly just so I can hold on to the foot without holding the clay itself. So it's a piece of wire just kind of bent and I added some foil to the end of it and I'm just going to start covering this in clay. For the front feet, they're going to be a little bit smaller than the back. The clay for the back feet are going to go a lot higher into the leg, so I'm going to be doing those a little bit differently. But I'm going to start on the front feet first, that way I can figure out how I want all the toes to look. 
So I have the base of my foot completely covered in clay and I'm going to use some balls of clay for our toes. So I'm going to start taking these and adding them to our foot. I'm going to make sure that there's a decent gap in between them, that way we can add the webbing. So I'm going to lay out the toes first, blend everything together and figure out where that's going to go before we add our webbing. Once I have all the toes in place, I'm then going to start on the webbing. For the webbing, I'm just going to take a very small amount of clay, kind of pinch it so it's a little thin, and I'm going to shape it to fit the gap between the toes. So I'm going to place it in between the toes, and then I'm going to use my tools to clean it up. And I'm going to do this between all four of the toes. So the style that I'm going for with the feet is kind of a cross between otter feet and dragon feet. So I'm trying to leave them kind of webbed and cute, but also they're going to have very large claws and different things like that. So once I have the webbing of the feet done, I'm going to start working on some paw pads at the very bottom. Now we already have the toes in place, so I mainly just need the padding that's going to be in the very middle. And then once I have the padding done, I'm going to move on to making the claws. So I'm just going to add some clay to the very fronts of each toe, blend it in, kind of frame it so it looks like it's separate from the rest of the foot, and just adjust the shape of it. To make them look a little bit more realistic, I decided to take one of my bigger dotting tools and make it look a little bit more hollowed out on the bottom. Now, like I said with the face, I am going to be making molds of this, so I'm going to be doing this as well with the feet. So, even though the toes are spread, I'm trying to not have them too spread because I don't want to get air bubbles when I pour my resin. So, honestly, I could have made these feet a little bit less spread, but I really wanted the toes to show off the webbing in between them. So, I'm just kind of risking it and hoping that they will cast just fine. So I got my front feet finished and then I did the same thing with the back. And like I said, the back ones are going to be a little bit longer because the back legs are going to be more clay than the front. So the only thing different is I just extended the shape of the foot to go to basically the next joint in the leg. So I'm going to finish up the back feet and then I ended up casting everything in silicone and ended up casting my molds with resin. So we're not going to be using the clay pieces for the original piece, we're going to be using some resin pieces. And with casting the feet, I was extremely lucky. I only had one major air bubble and I was able to fill it in with some extra resin after taking my pieces out of the molds. So now that we have our resin pieces, we can start painting them. So the angler dragon that I'm working on right now is going to be pink with blue details. So I want to match that pink that I'm going to use for the fabric as best as possible. And I did try adding a little bit of mica powder to my resin, but it didn't quite match what I needed. So I'm going to be adjusting that and getting all of my resin pieces the same color as the fabric, or at least as close to the color of the fabric as I can get it. So once I have all my resin pieces painted, I'm going to start adjusting the color of the pink and just kind of adding highlights and darkening and brightening different areas of the face. So I'm going to work on the face first and then we'll work on the feet. I'm then going to add a little bit of shadowing in between the wrinkles on the face. Now I don't want to go super dark because I want to keep everything kind of pastel-y, so I'm just going to use a gray paint and I'm going to paint into those cracks and then clean up anything that gets too far out of the cracks that I don't like. I'm then going to move on to painting the eyes. So even though our highlights and stuff are going to be blue, I'm going to start off with a bit more of a purpley blue first. That way the outer edge of the eye can be more on that darker side. And then once I have that dried, I'm going to start brightening up the middle of the eye and making it more blue. I do this that way there's a little bit more contrast and it really emphasizes the shape of the eye. Now at first I wanted to add a pupil to the eye and really get into the detailing of it, but I figured leaving it without pupils makes it look a little bit more like the angler fish. So I ended up in the long run deciding against adding a pupil. Now obviously doing this leaves the eyes looking a little bit creepier, but that was kind of the goal. Uh, anglerfish have very creepy giant eyes. 
But other than painting the eyes, the other details that I needed to do on the face was add some white to the teeth to make those stand out. And then I got a bit more of a vibrant pink for the nose. That way it was a little bit different from the rest of the body. I added shadows into the nostrils. And then I also wanted to add some polka dots of the color that I'm using for the eyes onto the cheeks and kind of around the wrinkles of the face just to add a little bit more detail and just to make it look a little bit more interesting. And then for painting the feet, I left this pretty simple. I added a little bit of a highlight to the very front of the foot. I ended up painting the paw pads on the toes the same color as the eyes and other accents that are going to be on the angler dragon. And then the claws, I ended up deciding with using a white. I figured it worked really well with the other colors. Once I was done with all the painting on the resin pieces, I ended up taking some clear resin and going over everything to help protect the paint. So I just kind of painted it on and set everything off to the side to cure. And while all of that is curing, it's going to take roughly about 24 to 48 hours. We have plenty of time to work on some sewing. So these are the pattern pieces that we're going to use to make our body. Now there's a lot more than normal because with this piece, I wanted to have a bunch of different extra things. I wanted to have antennae to have the glowy bits on. I wanted ears and I also wanted to have a bunch of fins. So let's get started on the fins first. So with the fins, I'm actually going to have three sets of them. I'm going to have fins going from the end of the tail up to the back of the hips. And then I'm also going to have fins on the front legs and on the ears. So each fin is going to have a front and a back. I'm going to pin all of these together and I'm going to start sewing. So now that we have all of our fins finished, we can start putting the body together. So I'm gonna take the fabric for the tail and the fins that are gonna be on the tail and I'm gonna start sewing those together. Now the underbelly of our anglerfish is going to be a fake leather. I really like this fake leather. It has this kind of shimmery effect to it and I'm going to start stitching my fins onto this. I figured it would just be easier to lay the fins out if I sewed them to one half of the tail first and then take the fabric for the top portion of the tail and sew that into place. So I'm going to sew the fins to the fake leather first and then I'm going to take the plush pink that's going to be the top of the tail and I'm going to start sewing that in place. And then once I have the tail put together, I'm going to start stuffing it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sides of the body and I'm going to start sewing those to the fake leather. So we have a left and right and the belly is going to go right between these two pieces and I'm going to sew them all together. So now we're going to start on the fabric for the legs and other details. So for the fabric for the legs, both the front and back legs have an inside portion and an outside portion. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew these two pieces together for each leg at the front. And the front legs are going to have fins, but we're going to wait until we close them up to add them. So right now we're not going to be working with those. But we can work on the fins for the ears. So I'm going to take those fins and the fabric for the ears. Each ear has two pieces of fabric and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the fin in place and close up the ear. So the sewing for the ear is basically like most of my ears just kind of closing everything up except the base. And then I'm not going to stuff them but I'm going to take my sewing machine and add a little bit more of a line to keep them flat. So I'm just going to sew a little bit around the edge of the ear. And then our other detail that I want to add to the face are some antennae. So I sketched out a nice little like swooshy motion that I want the antennae to have. Now for the end of the antennae, I have some pieces of resin that I've added glow-in-the-dark glitter to. And I tried to show on camera them glowing, but the exposure on my camera is just not working right now. I'm going to see what it takes to film glow-in-the-dark stuff because it's just a little bit difficult. But basically, I'm going to add this to a wire, and then I'm going to start adding some fabric around the base of this. I'm going to sew it in place, and then I'm going to take our antennae fabric, the long strip that we had that swishes, and I'm going to run it over our wire and sew it in place at the base of our glowy thing. And that's pretty much how I made the antennae.
Okay, so all of our little extra bits for the body are done to the point where we can start putting everything together. So I made a very simple wire frame. It's a little bit reinforced in the front because the head is kind of heavy and the neck is also long. So I wanted to reinforce that. And we're going to start adding everything to it. So I'm going to start with the fabric for the body and I'm going to figure out where the legs are going to go, cut some holes for that, and start running our fabric over the wire frame. I'm going to run the tail over the wire for the tail and run the leg wires through those holes that I made in the body. Then we can take our resin head and we can glue it to the end of the wire. So with this, usually I have a hole in the back, but because I ended up casting this with resin and I used wires to pull the head out of the mold, I'm just going to connect the wires that are sticking out of the back of the head to the wire frame and then I'm going to wrap everything together and cover it up in glue to protect everything. And then I'm going to take the fabric for the neck and I'm going to start gluing it around the base of the head. So I'm going to go all the way around and then once that's dried, we can start closing up our body and stuffing it. Now remember, we still have to sew the rest of the fins on the back of the body in place. So I'm going to do that first and then we can start stuffing and closing it up. Then we can start adding the legs. So I'm going to take the fabric for the back legs, I'm going to start with those first, and I'm going to sew them onto the body. So I'm going to lay them out and sew around that wire that we have hanging out of the body, which is going to be used for the leg. Once that fabric is in place, I'm then going to adjust the length of our wire, and then I'm going to connect our back legs in place. So I'm going to add those resin feet to the wire frame, and then we can take our fabric and start gluing them around the bases of them, and then we can stuff and close up the back of the legs. And then with the front legs, we're going to pretty much do the same thing. I'm going to sew the fabric in place, add the resin feet to the very front, glue that around the base of them, stuff, and close them up. The only thing different is when we're stuffing and closing them up, I'm going to be taking those fabric fins and I'm going to be sewing those in place at the same time as closing them up. Okay, we're almost done. We just need to finish the face. So we need to add our antennae and our ears. So I honestly should have drilled these holes before putting everything together, but I forgot. So I'm going to take my drill and I'm going to find those little indentions that we had sculpted on the face and I'm going to drill into the head. So I'm just going to use a pretty decent sized drill bit. That way there's enough room to fit the wires and I'm just going to drill all four of those. Then we can take the wires that I'm going to put inside of the ears and I'm going to glue them into the holes for the ears. I'm going to let those dry and then I'm going to run the ears over those wires and I'm going to sew them in place. So with the base of the ears, I'm just going to fold them in half and I'm going to find out where I want to position them and I'm just going to stitch them in place on the neck. Then I'm going to take our antennae and I'm going to glue those into the holes for them as well. So I'm going to push those into the holes, let everything dry, and then the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of fur to the face and around the feet just to clean up the edges. So I ended up taking some fur trimmings from the fabric that I'm using for the body and I'm just going to apply some glue onto the surface where I want the fur to be, lay out my fur trimmings, move them around, and let everything dry. Okay guys, and here are the two angler dragons that I ended up making. I'm really happy with both of them. We got the pink one that we did for the tutorial, and then I've also got a black and green one that I just didn't think would work well on camera because 
Anytime I make black creatures with black fabric, everything just kind of blends together on screen and it you can't see what I'm doing too well. So I wanted to make him, but he couldn't be used for the tutorial. It's just too dark. But yeah, both of these came out really cute and they're gonna be in my Etsy shop. So if anyone wants to give them a new home, check the links down below for that. I'll have that linked along with a bunch of different art supplies that I like to use to make my art dolls. So if you wanna give it a try and make your own art doll, check those links out as well. Now they are affiliated links so if you guys buy anything through them, it does help support the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, to all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!